Tetraplegia, also known as quadriplegia, is paralysis caused by injury to the cervical area of the spinal cord in the region of the neck. Tetraplegia leads to some degree of weakness or paralysis of the upper and lower body, including the shoulders, arms, hands, chest, legs, and feet. For many individuals living with tetraplegia, the loss of arm and hand function means that help may be needed for day-to-day -day activities. Despite the weakness, however, some people can still use the hands in an adapted way. This potentially useful skill highlights the importance of both preserving hand function through proper positioning and stretching to maintain the right level of flexibility and exploring different strategies to enhance hand strength and function. There is a common set of surgical and non-surgical options to improve hand function after tetraplegia, and the selection is generally based on the pattern of strength preserved in the rest of the arm. However, each person's goals, preferences, and body mechanics resulting from the spinal cord injury are unique. This means that the tools, strategies, and techniques used by one person to improve their hand function may not be the best choice for another. In this video, we would like to share three examples of individuals with tetraplegia demonstrating the use of their hands and the tools they use. Please note that there are other surgical and non-surgical options available that are not featured in this video. This is Emma. Emma has a C6 AISA spinal cord injury and has learned to use a variety of tools to increase her independence with everyday activities. There are tools that I use every day to make things easier for me. The thing I use the most is my universal cuff. I use this for a variety of reasons. I use this um, with my fork, I use it with a pen, and I also use it with my stylist when I'm using my iPad. Um, I really like it because I'm able to get it on by myself. Um, so here it is with silverware. So I'm going to eat, works like that, um, and then if I was going to use a stylist, it's okay. Okay, so with my iPad, turn it on, and then I can get around on here really well and then if I'm going to use it as a pen and then this is a stylist and a pen it's two in one so I like that um, so just put it back on um, and then I have found that um, pens with a gel tip or felt tip um, are easier to use because I don't need as much pressure um, which this is not but um, and then I'm able to write, um, which my writing is not so great, but works well, does the job. So this is my universal cuff, and I can use it for all sorts of reasons. Um, if I'm doing makeup or anything, I can slip something in there and use it. In addition to using tools, Emma has also learned to use a strategy called tenodesis. Tenodesis is the way your hands and fingers passively or automatically open and close depending on your wrist position. Some individuals with tetraplegia are able to use tenodesis to grasp objects despite weak or absent finger function. By moving your wrist down, your fingers will open away from your palm. By raising your wrist up, you can passively move the fingers and thumb closer together. In this way, it's possible to pick things up. Tenodesis requires enough wrist strength to raise your wrist up against gravity and enough arm strength to position your hand strategically around the object you want to grasp. For example, watch as Emma uses her arm strength and her tenodesis to place her hand around an object, pick up the object, and then place it back down on the table. When I think about the progression of my hand function, I remember the early days after my accident and learning about tenodesis. And um, I remember during therapy, I would have to move blocks around. And I remember how frustrating it was and challenging 
because I wasn't good at it um, and my pinch from the tenodesis wasn't great. But the other day I was playing Yahtzee with my family and I thought about one weekend I was left Yahtzee when I was in rehab and I wasn't able to pick up the dice and it was very frustrating to me. But when I was playing the other day, I was able to pick up the dice and even now I'm able to pick up two dice at once. Um, and my tenodesis has come so far in my hand function that I'm even able to pick up a penny off of the ground. a full house. The advice I would give to someone with a new injury is try all different sorts of modifications and adaptions um, with your hand function to make your life easier. I personally don't like using a lot of things. I like kind of figuring out how to use them normal without having to adapt them. Um, but I'm always willing to try new things and kind of figure out what works best for me in my day-to-day -day life. And what's best for me is maybe not what's best for you, um, but you will figure it out along the way. Now meet David. David has a C5 SEI, and he had something called a tendon transfer surgery on his right hand. Tendons are the cord-like fibers that connect muscles to bones and allow muscles to move the joints. A tendon transfer surgery takes tendons of an arm muscle you can control and attaches it to a weak or paralyzed muscle in your forearm or hand. This can enable a person to use a strong muscle that they already control to move the weak hand, wrist, or forearm. There are several tendon transfer options depending on the pattern of weakness and the desired function. A tendon transfer surgery can improve grip, pinch or arm extension for some people who have lost this action as a result of spinal cord injury. Watch as David picks up items using his right hand, which had the tendon transfer surgery, and then demonstrates how difficult it is to grasp items with his left hand, which did not receive tendon transfer surgery. David is able to feed himself, write with a pen and paper, drink from a cup, and use a cell phone using the grip in his right hand. This is Jesse. Jesse is an artist who uses a device called a wrist-driven flexor hinge orthosis to improve his grip and pinch strength. This brace is also commonly referred to as a tenodesis splint because of the tenodesis action it enhances. A wrist-driven flexor hinge orthosis improves grip and pinch strength by moving the fingers and thumb closer together when the user raises up their wrist. Often, this type of mechanical brace is custom made by an orthotist. Talk to an occupational therapist or rehabilitation provider who is familiar with spinal cord injury if you think this device may benefit you. Jesse has been using a custom made orthosis since the time of his injury. The wrist driven flexor hinge orthosis allows him to grasp different tools in order to create his art. Listen as Jesse describes what activities he uses his device for. I, you know, obviously do a lot of drawing and I'm able to, the great thing about this brace for me is that I can, you know, pinch something and let it go. 
It's not like some of the kind of more mm, strap-on or fitted cuffs that I've tried. Um, so I can hold a pencil, and I put a little gel guy on there just so it's a good grip, um, and draw, but then I can also turn it over and re-grab to erase without you know, much delay, because I do a lot of uh, back and forth. Um, with a paintbrush, I have the same kind of uh, grippy guy on there. Um, I can, you know, hold it in. I do have to take a break, move and change the kind of the pitch on it, straight up and down to get a, you know, a cleaner line. But it's, you know, I can be pretty dexterous with this. And then just, you know, something else in terms of like house everyday things is, you know, once in a while I drop something, which I shouldn't because it's so difficult to get it back up off the floor. But I found that holding a spoon in this brace, I can lean over, grab an armrest, and get close to the floor and change this angle in any way I want to scoop up, you know, like a, a coin, uh, uh, you know, errant cat food. <laughs> um, but that, uh, along with the exacto knife, which I can also stab things on the floor, you know, like shred a paper, old piece of tape that's uh, driving me nuts, I can actually take care of it. So um, I also use uh, uh, different sizes of measuring cups when I paint to pour. But uh, I guess the other most important thing to mention is just that I. I'm able to catheterize myself also. Um, I've tried with using both palms to hold a catheter. It's tricky, it's possible. But being able to pinch something, you know, of a small diameter and, you know, navigate with it is just, it's huge for me. Um, I shave with it, mm, brush my teeth, uh, put on makeup. Mm, I can, you know, put batteries in a remote control, have some dexterity uh, that's, I'd say, uh, more stable and enables me to put pressure on things much better than I can with, um, you know, just my thumbs or uh, because of the paralysis um, or kind of how crude my two wrists are together. So, yeah, I love it. Um, I can put on my orthosis myself um, because it's shaped to my arm and wrist uh, well enough to kind of fit into place and then I can work these uh, webbed straps that have velcro on them because they have loops and I can fit my thumbs and pull them as tight as I like. And this one is um, kind of a new thing for me which is a, a whole in the webbing that fits onto a post on the back of the, the wrist span there. Because I used to have Velcro there and it would tear. Uh, it couldn't hold the force of my wrist, but this really locks in and lets me get a good grip on things. And the finger thing, sometimes I use my mouth on that just because I'm able to kind of pull it a little tighter. Um, and then it's pretty easy to take off. It happens pretty fast. I can kind of blow through it and chuck it and be on the go. As demonstrated in this video, hand function is unique to each individual, and there are many different tools and strategies that can be explored to help you improve your hand function and independence. An occupational therapist can teach you how to use a tenodesis grasp and help identify any techniques, exercises, and tools that may improve your hand function and independence. The decision about surgical and orthotic options should be customized to your specific needs, goals, preferences, and abilities. Work with your rehabilitation medicine provider and an occupational therapist to learn how best to maintain and improve your hand function.